I want to speak to the person who has ever felt like life was happening to them. How many of you guys have ever felt like life was happening to you? How many of you guys have felt sick of it? <laughs> Absolutely. Is it okay if I'm real with you tonight? Yes. yes. Okay. By telling you my story, some of my story, I hope that you can see how by crafting my story that you might be able to do that for your own life, crafting your own story. October 2006, my wife Susanna and I are about to move into our first home. We're expecting our first child. We're about to manifest the American dream. We had an 80-20 mortgage. The housing market was rising, and we were told that the that in six short months we'd be able to refinance our home into a lower payment, and, and things would be great. After all, the house, the housing market, constantly it, your house is an asset, and it, and it increases. Six months after that, we we learned better. In fact, I think that on the very date that we closed on our home, October 30th, 2006, was right when the housing market popped. We might have popped it. I'm not sure, but <laughs> right on that date. And it gets better. Six months after that, I hurt my back at work. I had really bad sciatica. I was, really, I was worried about being able to walk. I had, my leg was twitching. It was hard to be able to stand up. I was worried about being able to do my job. Seven millimeter protrusion, L5 and S1, epidural, I wanted to do a laminectomy, and the story just keeps getting better. I got transferred to a new position at work, something I didn't know how to do, and I had to learn a new job, and while I was getting trained, I kept getting taken out of the training to go do the old job because there wasn't enough people who knew how to do the old job. And as a result, my productivity wasn't what it was expected to be in the new job, and I got put on what they call an action plan, which is the first step of discipline that can lead to termination. It felt like life was happening to me. I was, I was not happy. It wasn't fair. I had some choices to make. I can either become one of those guys who lives a life of quiet desperation, or I could come out swinging. I decided to come out swinging. I decided to go back to school, online and on campus, full time to finish a degree in management. Now, mind you, before that, I had been a horrible student. I graduated from high school barely from the alternative school with the troublemakers and the pregnant girls. That was me. I had a C average when I, as I got my associates in electronics. And now I'm undertaking this, this monumental task of trying to accomplish a bachelor's degree while I'm working full time, overtime, family, church callings. But here's the thing, here's what was different. The stakes were higher. I had a family, a livelihood that required me to rise to the occasion. And this, this, this circumstance of life had happened to me. It had fallen on my lap and required me to do something different. I had a why. I had a reason that was compelling enough for me to get outside of my comfort zone and act. So 14 months online on campus. I went from being Mr. Barely Graduate on Time and mediocre to summa cum laude 4.0. Oh, yeah. wow. I look back on that night and I marveled, how was that possible? Because that wasn't me, at least in my own mind. <laughs> but the seal was cracked. And I started to think, what if? What if I can do anything I put my mind to? <clears throat> I went into this beast mode of education. I decided to get certifications and everything that I could in, in computer networking. I got an N plus certification, an A plus certification in building in fixing and building computers, armed security, executive protection, protective driving, all kinds of things because I wanted to protect my livelihood because I had a family I needed to take care of. And the pattern here was though that I was on the defense. I was responding to life, trying to get back to normalcy to provide security. And along this process, it started to occur to me, what if I can use this new mindset that I can do anything to get ahead instead of to get by, instead of to reach, just get back to normal. What if I use that same mindset to get ahead? Can I change my life? Can I live the life that I want? I read a book, I believe it was by Wayne Allen Root. 
he was talking about how how you can survive and thrive in this economy. This was back in 2010. He said that if you're relentless, and I can do relentless, my mother called me relentless yeah. while I was growing up. <laughs> I can do relentless. If you're relentless, you can do well in a home-based business or network marketing. But I didn't know anything about business, much less a home-based business or network marketing. I had no interest in it. But the thing is, I knew better. I knew that I could do anything I put my mind to. And that what started to happen was that I realized that I can craft my story. Life was not, didn't have to happen to me. I needed a new perspective. And that perspective included knowing that life can happen for me. It's not just happening to me, but happening for me. I learned that some of the things I knew were true. Some of the things I knew were not true. Some of the things I, I knew I didn't know, and some things I didn't even know that I didn't know. I learned that I needed to define what it is that I really wanted my life to look like. That I, that I can learn from people who have results that I can do the same thing. I learned that time passes too fast, and that time is going to pass anyway. I began to craft my story, and in three years, I changed everything. This last Friday, I retired from my job of 20 years. I did not have to rely on the union, on a boss, or anyone else. I can craft my story. And what I would submit to you is that you can craft your story. The minute we start to think and or to adopt the perspective that life is happening for us. That every choice we make every single day can determine whether or not it's happening to us or it's happening for us. Craft your story.